On a cold winter day in 1951, Walter Zinn and a group of scientists met in a small nuclear reactor 50 miles west of Idaho Falls to conduct an experiment that would change the modern world forever. It was five days before Christmas, and Cold War tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union were at their height. The Soviets claimed that everything the United States did nuclear was about weapons. We didn't have a peaceful bone in our bodies. But this experiment would prove that the U.S. was about more than nuclear weapons, and that atomic energy could be used for peaceful means. That day, Zinn and his group of scientists conducted the world's first usable electricity generated by a nuclear reactor. That first day they lit the four light bulbs, the next day they lit the entire building. That's the story behind Experimental Breeder Reactor 1, the first nuclear reactor built in Idaho on the National Reactor Testing Site. NRTS, as it's known, is the predecessor to what we know today as Idaho National Laboratories. Testing at EBR1 confirmed that a reactor could create more fuel than it consumes, and it paved the way for an even bigger scientific breakthrough with a different reactor four years later. In July of 1955, another group of scientists attempted to use nuclear energy to power an entire town. They said, aha, we're going to use Borax 3 and we're going to power Arco, Idaho. So they brought in all the switch gear, they tied from the generator into the power grid, and it came a certain point and they flipped a switch and they were not in phase with the utility and they fried seven miles of power lines, just dropped them, poof. They tried it again several days later and this time they succeeded. And the next night or two nights later, they made sure they were in phase with the power company and they switched over to Borax 3 and for about an hour in the middle of the night on July 17, 1955, they lit our central facilities area and Arco, Idaho. Arco, located 20 miles northwest of EBR-1, became the first city in the world lit by atomic power on July 17, 1955. Carol Jardine remembers what happened that day. It was very hush-hush, and we didn't know it happened until it was over. Jardine was in high school at the time. Her memory of that day is vague, but she does remember where she was when it happened. She says she was watching a movie at the old Walker Movie Theater, and there was a power surge. Show went off and then it came back on. Though powering Arco with nuclear energy was groundbreaking, Miley says it was just a drop in the bucket given Arco's small size. And lighting Arco with one reactor wasn't that big of a deal. It did not require megawatts of electricity. It was pretty small at that point. And that's exactly what Jardine and others thought at the time. To a 17 year old, it was no big deal. Later on, I was secretary of the Chamber of Commerce, and that's when they started Atomic Days. Years after the initial test that powered four light bulbs, EBR-1 continued as a site for generating usable electricity for 12 more years. It was shut down in December of 1963. They had done everything imaginable they could with this reactor. They didn't build it with room to really modify anything. And by 63, they said, there's just nothing else we can learn from this one. EBR-1 was decommissioned the following year and dedicated as a National Historic Landmark on August 25th, 1966. This was only two years retired when it gained that designation to really which really should highlight what was done here was incredibly significant for the nation and the world. Today, EBR-1 is open as a museum between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Miley says more than 10,000 people from all over the world visit the site every year. One of the exhibits on display is a wall hanging that contains the names of the 18 men involved in that initial experiment 67 years ago. The gentleman that signed the wall, I met quite a few of them throughout the years and and it was just a real treat to get to, to walk the, through this building with them and the pride they took and what they accomplished here. There are no surviving members of the EBR-1 light bulb experiment, but Miley says the men consider themselves a team and were happy to be involved in whatever capacity they could. They truly felt like pioneers with what they were doing, and they, they really were. In Arco, I'm Rhett Nelson, and we are East Idaho.